Hello, this is Purge, bring you guys a first-person replay commentary. This is a Lone Druid game. Uh, I played two Lone Druid games yesterday, two days ago, and I forgot how much I love Lone Druid. He's so much fun. Uh, I, I don't. I just love micro heroes. Is that is that wrong? Let me talk about the hero as a whole, uh, and we'll hop over to the Dota buff segment. He is one of the least popular heroes in the entire game, 102nd <laughs> total. So very, very few games are played with him. 2.4% of all pub games include him. Wow, I was wondering it's actually higher at low. Interesting. Uh, very interesting hero. Basically, he summons a bear that operates as a separate unit, but the cool thing is that it can hold items. So, interesting things about the bear is that it has very, very high HP, between 1,400 and 2,700. Um, it has natural regen. It has a different base attack time. It has base armor. Um, the thing is, though, if you kill the bear, it gives the person that kills the bear a lot of gold. Uh, you get 300 gold from killing a bear. So right now, if the bear dies, it's a pretty big penalty. Um, in the past, it wasn't nearly as much. It was a very low amount. Um, if the bear is dead, then you have to wait to resummon it. But they recently buffed the summon time, so you can actually resummon the bear more often in the laning stage. Uh, that's uh, that's the base of the hero. The hero is based around the spirit bear. Okay, uh, You have some other abilities. Uh, synergy increases your bear's movement speed and its damage. So you get up to 40 movement speed and up to 40 damage. It also increases the time that Rabid lasts, which is this skill. It increases the attack speed of yourself and your hero, uh, your, sorry, your hero and your bear, up to 40 attack speed and 20% movement speed, which is massive. It only lasts 10 seconds, but if you get true form level, or synergy level, sorry, every level increases it by 10. So if you wanna make this a permanent ability, you have to, it's on a 30 second cooldown, you have to get at least two levels of synergy to make Rabbit up 100% of the time. Usually what I do is I get at least two to three levels of synergy before going back for Rabbit, but uh, that's just because synergy is a lot better in the early game and you can't really afford the mana cost of spamming Rabbit a lot. Now your ultimate is called True Form. It trans or transforms you into a melee-based Lone Druid, and by doing that increases your HP, increases your armor, changes your base attack time uh, to 1.5, whereas your heroes is at 1.7, so you attack faster. And then uh, you also move, lose movement speed of 45 and it takes 1.933 seconds to transform you. Now, a cool thing about transform abilities, there aren't very many in Dota anymore, but what it, you can do with this is that you can, uh, at, if you press the transform as soon as you take a source of projectile damage, then you can prevent the damage. It's very, very unknown, and it's not something I do at all this game, probably, but you can um, dodge abilities that way. So if you are about to die, if there's like one projectile coming in that's gonna kill you, if you transform right when it hits you, you can make yourself invulnerable for that very, very small time period. So it's very hard to do, but it still exists in Dota. It's kind of like Manta style dodging something. Very low chance, but you can do it. Now, while you're in true form, you also get the sub ability called Battle Cry. Battle Cry got buffed a lot recently. What it does is as you activate it, it lasts for six seconds, very low duration compared to before, but it gives you 90 bonus damage and 10 armor to yourself and your bear. That is a stupid amount of damage. It is so much damage increase and makes your hero a lot better in the early game for focused kills. So getting your ult at six is in a lot of ways a lot better due to Battle Cry being buffed a lot. So Battle Cry is really good. Last, uh, up to 20 armor and 150 damage, so it's a stupid amount of damage. This other sub ability is turning back into the range form. Every time you transform, it costs you 25 mana, so keep that in mind. Okay, so that's his base abilities. Now, one other thing that I want to point out before I go on is that the bear's damage is normal. Now, if I if I remember correctly, um, I'll do this on a different um, damage types in Dota 2. I am pretty sure that normal damage versus hero damage, all heroes do hero based damage, it's more of a Warcraft 3 thing, but it still applies. Um, hero damage does almost the same, oh I don't want this, there we go, um, I will pull this over here. Uh, um, sorry, one sec guys, yeah I think this is okay. Okay, so uh, normal damage and hero damage are the two that we want to compare. So the only difference between the two, well, there's only a couple important ones. The main one is that um, normal damage does less to heroes, okay? So if you're taking a bear and you're hitting a hero, you're doing 75% of the damage that a hero would do. So for example, if I buy a sacred relic on a lone druid, then his bear hitting a hero only does 45 damage compared to the normal heroes doing 60 damage to a hero. That's very important. Fortified armor is also important. You do extra damage to towers, 
with normal damage versus hero damage. So that means that your bear does more damage to towers. So that's one benefit you get. And against medium and heavy armor, the damages also change. But medium and heavy armor, to my recollection, I don't know which creeps have medium or heavy. I think it's very, very few in Dota 2. Almost all creeps in Dota have either light or unarmored. So for example, piercing damage uh, versus unarmed targets does 50% extra, but it does 50% to the hero. That's why things like Plague Wards for Venomancer or Serpent Wards on Shadow Shaman do way more damage to creeps because they're hitting unarmored and light. Light, I believe, is ranged creeps, and unarmed, unarmored, I believe, is melee creeps. So light takes a bit more from damage sources, uh, but for normal, it does the same to both. So the armor types you pretty much only have to worry about in Dota 2 are unarmored, light, fortified, and hero. You can check this very easily if you play the Warcraft 3 version because, um, because of the fact that uh, you actually see the icons for what armor type it is. But in Dota 2, they hit all that stuff because it's, it's a very small point. It's something to keep in mind, but it's a very small point. That's not the tab I wanted to go to. So that's uh, something to keep in mind on Lone Druid. If you go for a right-click build on him, your damage to heroes will be a little bit less than uh, it would be if your hero was carrying the item. There are some ways to get around that. You can build items like Radiance, for example. It's actually not even in the most used items. I'm really surprised about that. But uh, Radiance is a very common item build on Lone Druid because you have a bit of a leash range on Lone Druid. If your bear gets far away from your hero, then he can't attack. Um, you have to stand near your main hero for him to be able to attack. Otherwise, you could run the bear around the map willy-nilly without worrying about him dying. Now, you can make him do that if you buy an Aghanim Scepter. They recently added this. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm sure it's really good. Uh, the downside is, of course, that you're not getting as much experience as you would if you were standing next to the bear. But as long as you're like level 25, then it really doesn't matter. So late game Ags is definitely an item option. And if you're going for a, a bit of a split push build, then Ags is also very good. So I'd say buying the Ags really just depends on the game. Um, common lanes, jungle is not very good. I prefer either off lane or safe lane. I think these lanes are better. You could, I guess, go middle if you want, because there are some matchups where you're maybe a bit better, but not a huge... Uh, a huge uh, advocate for this either. You can see the best Lone Druid player is very clearly Admiral Bulldog. Uh, I know he's played way more Lone Druid games than many other players. Um, he did uh, lose a match a day ago, but won a couple other ones as well. So if you guys want to see a really top tier Lone Druid play, then check him out. Now, uh, common items you'll see on some of his builds there is uh, Tranquil Boots is one of the best. Uh, you want to build Tranquils because you put it on your main hero. You don't really want to buy an item that life steals or heals your hero. Maybe some games you will build Vlad's, but in most cases it's wrong to build a Vlad's in my opinion because Vlad's is a intermediate item and Lone Druid farms so rapidly that you can just focus on bigger items. Like why would you buy a Vlad's when you can get an AC for example? AC will do way more for your bear. Oh, and one other thing I forgot to mention. Your bear actually does have a sub ability. He has two actually, one of which is called Recall. If your bear hasn't taken player-based damage for three seconds, you can teleport him back to where your main hero is. So that's one thing you can do. And the other one is that he also has a sub-ability called um, Entangle, which gives you a 20% chance to entangle your opponent, which is similar to Frostbite or Syrian Chains. Your opponents can't move, they can still attack, but they can't blink. So against blink heroes, it's very useful, and also does physical damage, the Lone Druid one does. Um, and he also has one more sub ability called Demolish, which means that he does bonus damage to towers and build or to buildings. So your Lone Druid Barrier does a lot of tower damage, really, really big. So that's why it's important to get Tranquil Boots, basically, uh, because your main hero can run really rapidly. You don't actually fight that often anyways. It keeps your armor up on your main hero. It keeps your regen way up on your main hero. Vlad's occasionally is good to have, sometimes. Uh, since you do have up to 12 item slots, yeah, obviously some time of Vlad's would be good. But usually you don't really need it. Um, you can always resummon the bear, and lifesteal on your hero doesn't really make that much of a difference because you're very rarely attacking with it. Hand of Midas is common sometimes, but I think right now it's not very important. You can farm very rapidly with Lone Druid. I don't think you need to get a Midas. Unless you can get it sub 4 minutes in the safe lane, then it's great. Um, other than that, I would ignore it. Uh, power Treads, not a huge fan. Regular Boots of Speed, I think, are fine. I would not get Power Treads on the main hero. Tranquil is clearly the best item choice. And Phase Boots, I actually buy pretty much every game on the bear. Because it, if you put the Phase Boots on your bear, it gives you 24 damage on the bear. And it helps him run from hero to hero faster. And that's really important because your Disables are very weak on this hero. You're essentially hitting somebody and waiting for the root to land. The root being the Entangles, so that you can really focus your damage. Another way that you could help that out is by buying an Orb of Venom and putting that on your bear. That way, whenever your bear attacks a hero... You has, he has an even bigger movement speed. So having mobility on this hero, just basic movement speed, is really nice. But the main way that you get that is pretty much just Rabid. By getting levels and getting close to level 14, you'll have 4 points in Rabid, you'll have 4 points in Synergy, and then 
uh, synergy here. And then your bear runs 20% faster, and your hero runs 20% faster, and you get attack speed. So levels are actually really important on Lone Druid. Getting to the 14 mark is, is very crucial. And having that mobility can be covered in the early game by just phase boots as well as Norba Venom. I do recommend at least brown boots on your boot bear as well as your hero. Really important that you do that. And I personally really like phase boots on the bear since it helps you just chase from place to place a little bit faster. You're very close to movement speed capped when the bear is 16 because you're already getting 20% movement speed here and you're getting 40 here. So that alone is putting him close to 450. But that extra boot speed can often make a really big difference. Now Skull Basher is another common item. You can put one on your bear, you can put one on your hero. It's a great item transition. The bear now has mana, so you can buy things like Mjolnir or Abyssal Blade and have it be useful. So that's pretty cool. Um, and other than that, we'll go for some other items. Heroes are good against. Uh, good against Templar Assassin, Techies. That makes sense because you can run through mines because you have so much HP. Templar Assassin kind of makes sense because you often buy Radiance, which will break his refraction. And if you entangle him, he can't meld, so you can kind of just kill him right there. And these other percentages are, are frankly nothing. These are very, very, very small advantages. Nothing really worth mentioning. Um, disadvantages, you're bad against Beastmaster. Uh, probably because of the Boar Slow and the ability to lock down your main hero and just kill you there. Um, these other heroes, not quite sure. But there aren't a lot of disadvantages for the um, Lone Druid, and there aren't a huge amount of disadvantages. The stacking is very good, 2.7 agility, 2.1 strength, and 1.4 int is plenty. Um, base movement speed is 325, really fast movement speed, but keep in mind when you use your ultimate, you lose 45 of that. And then your damage is pretty darn good at 46 to 50. Your armor is not bad at 3.3.6. 3.36 is what I meant. Okay, so that is the basics of Lone Druid. If we look at his hero meta statistics, he actually has the highest win rate at 5k and above, probably because the hero is a little hard to micro, kind of makes sense. His win rate's pretty low, could be better. Definitely could be better. Um, he'll probably receive a small buff. Again, I think he's in an okay place, though. Uh, I think my favorite item on him right now is actually Medallion, uh, because you can put the Medallion on your hero. It helps offset the fact that you're losing mana from casting Rabid. And then you can use that either to give armor to your bear if he's in trouble or tanking Ancients, or you can use it on the person that you're focusing on. So Phase Boots on my bear, Tranquils on my main hero, and Medallion is basically the build that I think is the best. My overall win rate is 53%. I've played a moderate amount of Lone Druid games, about 50 over my Dota 2 career. And I like him a lot, actually. He's probably, I don't know, I played the two games yesterday, and I had to pick him twice in a row. That's how much fun I had. So I really like Lone Druid. Now, I did play two games in a row. My second game was a lot better in my career. I'm going to show you guys the first game, because it was a little better. I improved my Lone Druid a lot by the second game, and it turns out that when you play better, you oftentimes win your game much faster, and it becomes less competitive. So I didn't play the best Lone Druid here, but I want to talk about him a lot, because I really like the hero right now. And I can talk about items and farming patterns and good stuff like that. Playing with Chachi Blanket, Jarhead, and a random. We didn't know this guy at all, so keep that in mind as we go through this. Looks like we're playing against a bunch of Chinese players. It's very common for Chinese players to play in West at the end of the night. I'm not really sure why they do, but it's very common. Maybe they're um, students or something like that. Could could just be that. But yeah, I want to go play perspective. Okay, so starting items. Uh, I had a safe lane in this game. So I bought a Ring of Protection. I don't know if that was the right choice. I feel like it's a little greedy not to get two sets of regen. Uh, another issue is that you're not going to be able to see me micro this properly because, um, unfortunately, for Dota 2 replays, it doesn't show the player switching control to both the bear and the hero. But I can talk about that a little bit, just so you guys kind of understand what I'm doing while I'm doing it. So this is how I play Lone Druid in almost all micro heroes. I hotkey... Um, here, I, I can actually show you in my options. That might be a little bit better. Um... My control group one is actually select hero here. This is always my hero. For every hero I'm playing, I know that I double tap one, and that is going to be my hero. My other two control groups are group two and group three on two and three. And I believe before, I was actually starting to put F keys. Oh, select all other units for F1. And do I have anything on F2? I don't think I do, but I... Oh, quick buy, that's right. So... Technically, if I wanted to right now, I could use F1 to control my bear and 1 to control my hero. But the way I've been doing it is 2 to control my bear and 1 to control my hero. So always hotkey your micro units on a different hotkey than the one that you're using your hero on. Because you shouldn't have to like use your mouse to drag select on a bear during a fight when you're busy. You have to practice thinking of them independently. My hero goes here by one right clicking and then I put my bear on somebody else by two right clicking. If you get good at this, it helps you a lot and allows you to play the hero correctly. So make sure that you guys practice that if you do want to get good at Lone Druid. 
I think he's a really fun hero to get good at, though. He's pretty straightforward. He's a little hard to snowball with. You don't have as much control over the game. But he's also very different in playstyle, and he's also very micro-intensive, so it feels like you're actually doing a lot when you're playing, which is fun. And he's also a farming hero, so you're very busy throughout the entire game. Now, just because you have a bear doesn't mean that you can't be strong with your hero as well. Your hero has a very, very good animation. The battle begins. This was a very peculiar blink forward, but she actually did grab it. I was kind of hoping that there was going to be a sprout there, but instead we found the uh, the timber saw, and I luckily got first blood. That was pretty cool. But one of the coolest things about Lone Druid is basically that you have two right clicks at the start of the game. Keep in mind that the bear does far less. Uh, the bear here, I think, does. I'm buying an orb of venom here. I believe the bear does about 38 damage at level 1, whereas your main hero does 48. But the important thing is that you have two units that can right click, whereas they only have one. So in a lot of cases you're doing something like, at, at least at the very start, you're doing way more damage than your opponents. And I also have way more armor than this Quap, so I'm very happy to trade hits right now. Bear coming from the back to do some harass. And this is pretty common for the way that I play Lone Druid basically. I hit people a lot in the laning stage. And a lot of times I focus on that more than grabbing last hits. Now, because I got a Ring of Protection, I also have even more armor. So it's not showing correctly, but I actually have 6 armor right now. Which means that every single Tango I use is technically giving more HP than it would be my opponents. First item that I want to buy is probably Boots of Speed. Because if I do buy Boots of Speed here, then it's going to give me a further mobility advantage over my opponents. I will focus a little bit on last hitting now. To be a little bit worried about the timber saw here. But again, fighting a lot. Should be a kill here. Almost got the quap as well. You see how much advantage you get from playing Lone Druid? You have two units attacking. You can get an orb of venom on the bear. And they actually just can't stop the damage. They can't just right click the bear because if they do... Then they just get completely outplayed there. And because I burned through a lot of my region and I was a little bit greedy on region items, I felt like I had to get Tranquils immediately. This limits me slightly because I would rather have Boots on my bear so that he can harass a bit more and just chase him down more rapidly. But having Tranquils on my main hero is really good here as well. Same thing, gives me one more armor. Every right click on the Queen of Pain when possible. Messed up my right click a little bit. Get a little bit of hit on a tower and then uh, should be fine. So we've got two kills already. I've got seven last hits. But the I love fighting with this hero in the early laning stage. He's so strong at it. And most players just completely underestimate how strong it is. Moving my bear around, that way I can get into position to attack without having to actually threaten uh, my hero. You can see when the bear can't attack by the... Uh, the There's like a broken sword above his head. That means that he's basically disarmed and he can't attack. And that's just happening because it's a little bit too far away from me in those instances. You can control the lane really well in Lone Druid as well, that's another cool thing. Messed up my attack there. And again, moving the bear. Even if I'm not attacking a hero with them, I can literally just run the bear at them and they have to back away. So a little bit of micro in the laning stage can mean a big difference, especially when I'm already trading HP efficiently. And again, letting him attack my bear, it's really not that big of a deal. I can always resummon it if I need to. And in most cases, you will grab uh, two levels of synergy here. You could maybe justify that I get at least one rabbit, but I'm pretty content with where I'm at here. And I'm basically dominating the lane. If you look at the last hits, I'm not that far ahead of them, but the fact that I have two kills and I've severely won the regen fight is really good. Right now, my bear is hitting for, I believe, 48. I'll just... Pop this into free camera for a second. 53, actually. Stout Shield, Orb of Venom. I think if I open F5, you actually can't see the bear stuff. So I'll have to check those items for you occasionally. Unfortunately, you can't see it. Due to it being a replay, unfortunately. This guy coming way too far up. I'm very happy to hit him whenever he does that. Because again, I've got Tranquil Boots and he harassed. He does to me is essentially wasted already. As long as I stop taking damage. If he goes for a kill on me before I heal up, then it's a little bit of a downside. But... Should be just fine here. Continuing the last hit if possible. Looks like I can actually click on the bear. Maybe that's one way to do it. Keep an eye on the bear, but... Did not notice the, uh, the bounty over here. Now, bounty ends up being a little bit of a problem because 
As a lone druid, I can't really disable him when I want to. In fact, this looks like it'll be a kill on the Gotta focus the quap now. Fortunately, I cancelled my attack here. Cancelled two attacks, actually. And I knew this was gonna cost me a kill, because his blink would come off cooldown. And I... He barely got away from me. I was really upset about that one. Because that was a, a free Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain kill is so big right now. Now, the important thing right here is that you always put... You always put the uh, the bear on the hero that, that's important to kill. I don't know if I should have juke that way or not. But Chachi was able to get the double at least. So that was pretty good for us. It sucks I died, but I'm 2-1-3 and three right now. I should have had that kill on the Queen of Pain as well. So that was a huge mistake that I didn't kill her. But overall, that was very good for us. But you can't cancel attacks like that. You have to be very careful not to do that. Because, especially the early game. The early game is so crucial to Lone Druid because you can get a stupid advantage due to how the, the hero functions. You have more right clicks than your opponents. People don't usually anticipate you being that strong. And then you get an item advantage over them and you kind of just like... You're kind of just invincible in a way, because once your ulti comes through and you have synergy levels, your HP shoots up massively. Like, if I hit level 6 right now, I would have about 1000 HP, just instantly. If we had any kind of detection here, we would have killed that guy. Unfortunately, we did not. We also have a bit of a disable problem on the team. We basically have Jakiro, and that's about it for disables. It's one of the common downsides. That's the Entangle, by the way. I have a cosmetic for it from a long time ago, so it's going to look a little different than maybe yours will, but it's about the same. Again, a couple little last hits here on the quap. I came a little far forward. That was a slight miss micro, it looks like. Have to stay back. Looks like my bear does have boots now, by the way. Uh, maybe. I actually don't know. It does, so oh, looks like they're going to blow on me here. Yeah, I probably should have stayed back. I should have realized that there was a high chance that the that the bounty was going to be roaming. So I decided to buy two sets of regen, uh, or detection, I believe. I don't remember if I bought a dust in addition, but at the very least, we needed sentries because I wasn't going to be able to lane there continuously. And here's the next issue is that I resummoned the bear due to my last death, but it hasn't res it hasn't uh, come off cooldown yet. So now I'm kind of limited in that I'm basically just a hero with Tranquil Boots, and all the items that I had on my bear are actually useless now. Um, looks like uh, the Lone Druid actually did buy the dust. On the bright side, I can go to the lane and I'm safe to farm here. Again, as most carries will tell you, they can't really do that much in the early stage. And I'm kind of the same now that I don't have the bear. But once I do get the bear, I'll, I will be strong again. Should have hit that at least twice leading up to get a last hit on that one. So for now, I just focus on farming again, if possible. My last hits are starting to be pretty bad. I should have more last hits than this, but considering that it's been a dual lane and I've been attacking heroes a lot, I'm not too upset about this. Occasionally just scouting for enemy heroes is really good to do. Definitely shouldn't be auto-attacking that. I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Why I looked down there. But I think we're pushing because Shachi was shifting over. So we're going to attempt to take the tower. Would have been kind of nice to have 6 by now, actually. Uh, you can maybe blame my supports for that. They should have pulled a bit more. Let me get soul experience, because if I'm 6, I'm so strong. This is Quap over here. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Pop did use ulti, but and then they're they're flanking us from behind. Unfortunately, I wasn't watching. And my bear died. Really unfortunate fight here. Chachi picked up the quap and he got the timber saw as well. That's that's good. I was telling him to use his spells, but he wasn't micro properly. He almost casted that nuke there too. Now Chachi looks good. But we did get the tower, I guess. It was pretty good. Uh, Chachi got almost all of that experience and advantage. And now I have to go to a lane that's easy to farm. It's really unfortunate I didn't have my, my ult though. Because if I had my ult, I would add 1000 HP. And then I most certainly wouldn't have been in any way threatened there. I'm going to transform here. As you can see, I have 1100 HP. So literally one level, and I had like twice the HP. And this is kind of the OP thing that comes down to Lone Druid. Your disables are weak, but your damage is so high that it doesn't really matter that much. Because you don't have to buy HP items. You just focus on making your bear as strong as possible, and farming rapidly, and not dying too much. 
And if you can accomplish that, you're in a really good place. There's my resummon. Gonna send my bear in the ember right away just to get some hits in. I'm gonna use my roar here, because I know it's gonna hit him way harder. It's really hoping to get a root. If I get a root, it forces him to use his ultimate to escape. He can do that. And, uh, Lone Druid's really not that great against Ember Spirit. I do have the benefit that um, roots do prevent him from attacking and all that good stuff, but see from there, there's the root. And it does physical damage, so that goes right through his uh, goes right through his Flame Guard. So Flame Guard's always going to be a problem for me unless I have Radiance, but on the bright side, I can kind of just hit him and I don't really have to worry about it too much. Pretty nice for me. Let's look at the fact that they were diving so far and trying to figure out if showing up to this fight was going to be useful. At this point, it was looking pretty good. I felt like I could chase. So, bring in the bear. <laughs> Only got assist out of that, but. I think it's not terrible to have. Uh, pick up level 7, I could justify maybe getting Rabid right now. Um, I don't remember what I get, but... Oh, I actually grabbed a Synergy level. So, you might be wondering why I didn't max out the Spirit Bear. The reason is because it does slightly increase the damage, and increases his HP and his armor and his regen. But the fourth level of the Bear gives you Demolish, um, which allows you to do more damage to towers. And usually I say that I don't really need that. And another little trick that you can do that's kind of cool is if your Bear entangles... The Entangle gets put on a cooldown for a couple seconds. I'll tell you after this fight. Just need a little bit of Disable here. Did put a Sentry down. Mm, wasn't able to get him. And now I'm in a kind of a bad spot. My bear's pretty low, so I'm kind of just running with my bear. Unless Chachi's in trouble, in which case I can't do anything now. That was a little unfortunate. I wasted my bear resummon. Um, anyway, so... If you're if you entangle and it goes on cooldown, you can't actually re-entangle them immediately after the first one's done. It's impossible to do. The only way to do it is to level up your bear, and by doing that, the bear transforms instantly into a better bear, and then the entangle cooldown gets reset. So the only way to double entangle somebody is to save the level up. And sometimes people can get tricked by this. Like right there, you see the the bear died and it resummoned instantly. I didn't have to use my ability to do that, but the important thing is that I got um, I got the demolish. And also, you get spell resistance out of Demolish. We can take a look at the skill. There we go. Demolish gives you 33% spell resistance, where before the bear has none, I believe. And it does 40% bonus damage to buildings. But Entangle's on a 5 second cooldown. It only lasts for 3 seconds on heroes. And it does 60 damage per second. So it does 180 physical. But the important thing is that now I phase on my bear. And you put this on a bear hotkey, and you keep it consistent. So now I just phase it after whoever I want to attack. If I can get a disable on, see, boom, got a, got a root, now Bounty's just 100% dead. Because it guarantees the root. Or it guarantees that he can't go invis. And now we're going to do some slows on the timber. Really nice play there from Shadowfiend, he raised and played that perfectly. But the important thing is that we got the disable on the Bounty, we killed him instantly so he can't kite or go invis, and then that made that fight really simple for us. I also used uh, Enrage when we are focused on them. When you know that you're going to be able to hit him for a couple seconds, using Enrage is really good. Or battle cry, sorry. I should still probably have one level of Rabid because it would increase the attack speed by 10. And as you can see, the bear attack speed is pretty bad. But jungling like this is very common. You want to set the bear, bear in the camp, and you want to set your hero nearby, but kind of hidden. Because right now I'm regening in the first place, so I don't really want to hit creeps. The bear does a large percentage of my damage. Maybe not right now, but at some point it definitely will do a super large percentage. Singing about TP in there. It's nice to have a Quelling Blade too, because you can cut through this tree. You can farm a little faster, but with a little bit of planning, it doesn't really matter anyways. TP into the top lane to defend this, and uh, we had a little bit of an over-rotation. I said something on uh, voice, and uh, everybody TP'd, but that was uh, absolutely necessary to have three TP's. Um, Nature's Prophet could be farming the jungle, for example. So anyways, now I'm at 1600 gold. I can basically look at my gold amount and say, what item do I get this game? Is this a Radiance game? Do I buy something else? And in fact, both of the two games, uh, I actually ended up buying a medallion. And I did that because I felt like their heroes were very hard to kill. And I felt like we were losing. We were getting killed a lot, stuff like that. Should have gotten that last hit with my bear. That would have been good. 
Grabbed a rabid level, so now I can increase my movement speed and my attack speed. I think this is completely standard. And uh, Medallion's coming out, so this will give me mana regen on my hero. If I get a root here, we can maybe go for a kill. Didn't get it, though. Again, it's, a, it's on average five hits will land a root. So keep that in mind when you're trying to figure out just how much damage you're doing. Now, I should have realized that Bounty was still here. I don't remember if they got one. I mean, I feel like they did, though. But I'm kind of positioning myself in that I won't be super screwed if they do. I did instantly get an Entangle on the Lundred. Now I need to back up. It's a dangerous little fight here. But again, if I entangle somebody, I'm medallion them, definitely. Because you know you're going to be able to hit them for a couple seconds. Now rekindled. It's just very, very scary Radiant's to run and fight here. My bear is a little low, so again, I could very easily give them the gold. So I'm going to run the bear back. I didn't really want to resummon it here. This is maybe a little inefficient in terms of farm, but I'm running the bear all the way back to base because I know that um, if I resummon it here and I die, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble for the one or two minutes afterwards. Radiance middle tower is under attack. For now, I'll just get last hits with my hero. The bear can resummon a little bit, or regen a little bit. Shadow Dagger really does not do very much against me. It's kind of dangerous Dying though, we don't really see where they are. Bring the bear back. Did I bring myself a TP? I don't remember. I guess I didn't really need to. But I basically saved a bear cooldown. Limited my farm a little bit, I probably missed at least a few last hits because of that, but... A lot of heroes in the jungle. Alright, we got the Entangle, so I can roar this for sure. Unfortunately, got the Blink out. That was very close. Got the first hit, Root. It's obviously great to have. I have to be a little bit worried about them turning on me now. Um, I think this is where I got jumped when I felt I was safe. Very clear that the bounty is following me. He could. He probably only really wants to go for that Courier. Running in circles here was a, a big mistake, I think. I have to be worried about some of that magic burst there. Um, don't think Chachi could have killed them. Oh, this looks really bad. Just landed some good slows and stuff, but... So it's not looking very good for a fight. Fortunately caught our Shadow Fiend here. He should have not, not gone there. Very dead hero. Well, right side, I can TP. Fortunately, I used my phase already, so I couldn't run my bear through. But Nature's Prophet ends up being the last hit. And didn't get hit there, and got the root. You can see I do a lot of damage. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Very survivable against Ember Spirit. You know, I, I can't disable the Ember very well, but he's also not very good against me. Like, yeah, he does magic damage, which is in a way a counter to my high armor, but my HP is also so high that it doesn't really matter. Like, Ember doesn't do that much damage to me. He can entangle my bear, but it's still kind of a waste for the overall HP of the bear, so I actually feel like Lone Druid's all right against Ember Spirit. I'm also okay late game. Yeah, he can maybe slight a fist and hit, get some reflection off of the bear, but it's not an amazing matchup, actually. The only problem is that I, I can't really kill him, and he can potentially kill me, and he can disable me. So I actually do have to worry about him a little bit. So at this stage in the game, you will be right-clicking creeps a lot, I think, because they're a large percentage of your damage. But to maximize your farm, you can do it a little differently. And uh, I don't know if I did it very well this game, but other games, uh, the game after, I did it really well. Um, I grabbed a level 2 on my ulti. I don't know if you actually need to do this or not. Let me, let's go back and check that. Okay, so my HP is 1422. I level up, and we'll see what it is afterwards. Okay, you do. So when you skill up from to your second point of druid form, you have to 
transform into range mode and back into melee mode again. If you don't, you don't, you might get the battle cry advantages, but you don't get the full HP advantages. Because one of the differences in the ult is that it gives you slightly more HP, as well as the better battle cry. Which, based on the battle cry damage, I think it's quite worth it to level up the skill now. Um, you can maybe argue against that. Perhaps you'd say 10% attack speed is better, 5% movement speed is better. But I kind of felt like um, getting the extra battle cry damage is really good here. So rather than buying a Radiance this game, I said, you know what, we're kind of losing. I feel like I'm not going to get to Radiance in time. They're pressuring me in the jungle really well. All I can really do is try to farm as many items as possible to make my bear strong now. And one of the things we really need is Entangles. And one good way to get Entangles is to get attack speed. Make sure you use Medallion on the creeps that, uh, that are highest HP so you can increase your farm rate. And basically jungling is very, very fast with Lundruid because of this. I should be using Rabbit, I don't know why I'm not. I'm making a huge mistake by doing that. It's actually a massive decrease in terms of farm. Um, one of the other reasons that I buy the Medallion is that you can have more mana regen, but I just forget about Rabbit sometimes. I am not sure why I put it back here. Oh, I think I left it so that Chachi could take it as a Chen. That's why I left that. But either way, you can actually increase your your experience a lot just by AFK jungler with this hero, and the medallion goes a long way towards accelerating that. I'm uh, queuing up some some creep commands. I still should have been using rabbit this whole time. I honestly don't know why I'm not. It's very seriously reduced my my farm rate. Pretty big mistake. Didn't really feel very good about fighting. There's no way that's a uh, Weeha, by the way. I'm gonna run my bear back to heal it. In the meantime, I'll try to finish up my um, my Maelstrom. The reason Maelstrom's pretty good is because it increases your attack speed. It gives you some farm potential. The reason why Maelstrom is bad is because it's not Radiance. Radiance does so much damage. And in AoE, you can set my bear. I can set my bear anywhere on the map, and it can push a wave using the Radiance Burn, whereas with Maelstrom, you can't do that. Um, Ways Maelstrom is good is you get attack speed. That's really good. So I like that aspect of it a lot. And now I can kind of start... Oh, actually, I don't think I have Maelstrom yet. I'm almost there after this creep wave. Alright, so fly the Maelstrom out. If we look at my net worth, it's pretty good. I'm actually farming fairly fast. My team has kind of distracted my opponents a lot while I just kind of AFK jungle. But I think it's okay to do this just because your attack speed is just so freaking good. And your, your farm speed is just so good on this hero due to having two heroes. But now is where things really start to accelerate. Now Medallion and Maelstrom obviously don't stack super well. But a large portion of your damage is still physical. And the Maelstrom is also just good because of the attack speed it gives you. So it's not a, it's not a horrible stack by any means. I sent the bear over here to grab this but unfortunately I kind of stole it from the... Um, the Shadow Fiend. You can grab those now. It gives you gold. In the past, it would not, I believe. The runes wouldn't work on the bear. I think some do. Not sure how many, but some of them do. I actually did max out the Rabbit here before maxing out the Synergy. I feel like that's maybe better. Just because overall, it's in a game like this where I need my overall attack speed to be really high, I think it's a better plan. Now, if I get a Synergy level, though, it does increase my HP by 100, so maybe you can criticize me there. Because it makes True Form better. It would give me 100 HP. Might be better to get the Synergy first, but it depends on what you need. And I felt like what I needed was as much attack speed as possible, because I need my bear to lock people down. But this is how you farm faster, by the way. You sit close to where the bear is going to go for the next camp, and then when it's time, you resummon it, and you phase it, and send it to the next camp. So it's pretty close to having an Anti-Mage. Obviously, I don't have the Battle Fairy, so it's not quite the same. But it's similar. And now we're just going to kind of run at them. If they stay. So right now, our ability to run at them is very good. My HP is really good. I have decent damage. If I entangle somebody, we can probably kill them. Continue jungling if possible. Have to be a little careful about them ganking here. Fortunately, my team kind of kept going up 
the middle is five, and I think that's a bit of a mistake. I really shouldn't be missing any of these last hits, and I missed like three. I'm not sure what I'm clicking on. So because my team is all kind of dying here, uh, that means that they're probably going to push, which means I should probably be split pushing. So this kind of solidifies my decision to stay in the top lane. Now if my team was fighting a place that wasn't as far away from a tower, I definitely would have shown up there, but because it was so deep in the mid lane, there's a very low chance of, uh, of me actually being able to get, to get there in time for it to be relevant. Now I'm also a little bit worried about ganking. I kind of feel like I made a mistake here by not pushing, but the tier 2 kind of died so fast that so maybe it wasn't that bad. Just continue in the jungle as fast as possible. Can perhaps defend the tier 2, that's actually something that I should be doing. Resummon the bear as soon as you arrive. Again, trying to chase this guy is pretty tough. If I get an entangle, then it's really good. But if I don't get an entangle, then we will not get a kill. So I'm just phasing him whenever I can, and finally he does use his spirits to jump. I'm just going to keep going. Ends up using two spirits, and at that point I'm like, alright, I've done I've done my job. I have wasted your spirits. We got some kills. We lost some heroes as well, but the fight was decent. And by buying a Maelstrom, I'm kind of setting myself up to eventually make a Mjolnir. And I think Mjolnir is actually very, very good on the Lone Druid right now. Due to the fact that he does have mana, so you can use the active, whereas before you weren't able to. I should be watching my team. Oh, that was Chachi. I feel like I maybe could have shown up for that one. Should have looked at least, no reason not to look. You grab a haste on Loon Druid, this is what happens. It looked weird. Bought the Hyperstone on the bear. So now he has Maelstrom, Phase, Orb of Venom, Stout Shield, and Hyperstone. If you guys learn better visually, then this is what we should do. There you go. So it does look like a lot. My damage doesn't look super high, but the important thing is that I'm getting rabbit attack speed. And that if you entangle, you're essentially doing a bash for 180 physical damage. And the fact that as I activate Mjolnir, I increase my damage a lot. Because it uh, works very good against damage over time sources, such as Ember Spirit. Because every time that I take a source of damage, it gives me a chance to send out a lightning proc. So Mjolnir versus an Ember Spirit is actually pretty good. Because it allows me to deal a lot of damage. Unfortunately, I was micro in my bear here, and then I got ganked. Right about now. That was really unfortunate. Put the uh, electricity on my hero, but they just, they hit me for too long. There wasn't that much I could do there. That was really unfortunate that I died there. Right as I got my mule there as well. Bit of a downer. Don't need that. Of the wood. Still getting text messages from the post office about the P.O. box that I had like two years ago. They're like, there's something in your mailbox. Like, no. I cancelled that so long ago. So dead. Dead for a while, unfortunately. Sucks getting ganked, but to be honest, I should have been ganked a lot more this game. It's one of the ways to really shut down Lundred. You don't let him farm. Uh, I feel like my CS is probably very high in this game. Yeah, I have more CS than anybody, but I have I have just been kind of AFK. In fact, the net worths look awful this game. For us, that is. All of the heroes have at least 9k net worth. That's incredible. But I guess they don't really have a support. That's probably why. So it's definitely a weird game. So next item I'm going to buy is a cloak. I felt like that was pretty clear after that last fight. It just took a lot of magic damage, you know? I felt like having the cloak was going to be a big deal, though, um, in the next fight. Because that's 20% magic resistance. It is a lot. A cloak on your main hero is a really good way to give, your, give you more survivability. Because the easiest way, usually, is just to kill the main hero. But if I have 20 armor... 30 armor, sorry, with a medallion and a tranquil boots. And on my bear, I've got 27 HP, and if he dies, I can just resummon him. Then I put my team in a really good place. I put my I put myself in a place where 
I have to take like a stupid amount of magic damage to die. So I'm way more survival now. This is like the most clearly the most clearly cloak game ever. Got a got a nice root on the uh, invoker. Oh, good work there. Phase when you can. I was hoping that I could get a bit more damage there. I thought maybe my team would be in the area, but I was miserable about that. Fortunately, it looks like he's gonna live. Those timber saw teeping, it looks like. Let's criticize nature's prophet's items. Um, really don't like drum of endurance. I think that's a poor item choice. I actually lost that fight really bad. I thought that I could do enough there. I did a lot of damage, 2800, but... Like, that's really all it takes, just a Mjolnir and a Phase Boots, and all of a sudden your bear just hits so hard. We're just lacking a little bit of Disable. It's one thing that combos very nicely with Lone Druid is the ability to just wail on people for a couple seconds. Works out great. So, if when Nature's Prophet should have done this game, probably, is if you want to get a Bracer, I think that's okay, but committing to a full drum, I think it's a mistake. It's an item that um, doesn't actually pay off for the Nature's Prophet in any way. It just gives you stats, which makes you right click -like slightly harder. Utility is really what NP needs because of the fact that you can be anywhere on the map. The drum doesn't provide that. What he should have built first, this game is an Orchid because we're lacking Disable and we're against a. I was alive for a long time, that was a big mistake, but I was not feeling very good about this game. Um, we're against an Ember Spirit and a Quap and a Timber Saw. All three of those heroes are really countered by Orchid. Orchid's also good against Bounty Hunter, Hunter, and it's also pretty good against Invoke. Orchid's good against all those heroes. So a fast Orchid is usually a go-to item on Jik on uh, Nature's Prophet. If he's really worried about dying and wanted generic stats, uh, just a Bracer would have been fine. I think. So. Attack speed is definitely one of the most valuable things that you can have on a lone druid when you're lacking disables. It's it works out the best basically. Yeah, you can maybe argue for a basher, but with a basher and no attack speed, you still don't do much damage. So kinda need both attack speed and sometimes a basher. So at this stage in the game, um, I don't remember what the next item I bought was here. But I feel like there's a very high chance this looks really bad. Again, I put the Mjolnir buff on my hero. Give myself some armor too. And now things are looking really good. I was able to get the bounty, that was pretty big. Trying to figure out where I want to go. Oh, I actually messed it up really bad. Oh, he did kill him, okay. I accidentally pressed F instead of R. I tried to make my bear run faster, but uh, instead I accidentally pressed my ultimate. So that was a pretty big mistake. So I, end, I did end up going Basher. Um, as you can see, I have a Belt of Giant Strength. When you do have the Belt, you always put it on your main hero until it's built, because your bear can't have stats. He doesn't have stats, so buying stat items actually doesn't do anything for him. Never buy stat items on Lone Druid unless you put them on your hero. It's just a visual bug. Looks kind of cool. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm in range form right now, it's because um, if your HP is lower, the Tranquil Boots heal you up a lot faster. Grab the Invis on my main hero, and I thought, you know what, screw it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna Roche. Then that's getting entangled. That was a nice stun. Pretty much guarantees our ability to get Roche now. Fortunately, Syrian Chains was on my bear. Ran the bear the wrong way, unfortunately. Told my team to back up. I really don't want to lose my bear. So much gold. It's basically equivalent to them getting a kill. I did buy my basher though. I think I decided to ditch here. I maybe should have fought that. You can maybe argue that I should have fought that, but I at least would have lost my bear once. Now the next problem is that I left the belt on my hero, so I can't just instantly make the the basher. Boom. So, oops. So if we take a look at my bear now, now I've got a basher and a Mjolnir. So not the best items. Um, usually a Radiance is better due to split pushing, overall team fight damage, but I am entirely focused on being able to kill somebody in a fight. I need to grab one hero and I need to murder them. And the only way I'm gonna do that is if I can lock them down. 
I have plenty of damage. You have plenty of damage now with the battle cry. You don't have to worry about damage as much on the hero. The, the issue is disabling your opponents. Got a bash. I mean, look how much damage that was. That was like three hits with a medallion, and he lost 30% of his HP. It's really good. Always carry TPs, by the way. Whenever you get ganked, you never know. Might be able to TP home safely. Let's see that bounty hunter on the map for some reason. Fortunately, I used my, uh, got my entangle off here. Damn, we almost got that guy. We really should have detection. The fact that we didn't kill him is bad. The sprout kind of was bad because it made me run around. I couldn't hit him with my hero. I could only hit him with my bear. So I didn't leverage my battle cry as much as I could have. Um, some of the sprouts were a little bit, uh, a little bit not good, but that's okay. Um, if you aren't going this build, by the way, AC is almost always the build you you do the item you do pick up. Radiance and AC is very 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 standard. I told my team that I wanted to fight here. That damage, man. It's beautiful. Oh, look at that. Again, lower the armor of the timber saw. Very easy kill. Still don't have dust. Now we do. This one felt good. Very happy to kill him this time. Now you have to be careful with Tornado. Tornado will remove Rabid. The movement speed ability from your bear. So it's important you put it back up. That was a huge kill. But I did get my mana drain, so no more mana. Maybe this is my bear. Uh, looks like Ember actually got that. Now your bear does stay alive while your Aegis is respawning. Luckily, um, they buffed Lone Druid, said if you re revive on Aegis, you stay in Lone Druid form. Pretty nice. And I have to worry about dying again. So yeah, a couple things you have to worry about. Dispels are really nasty against Lone Druid, because you can make the bear attack 40% attack speed, 40 attack speed slower, which is a huge nerf. Why in particular was I buying this? I, I decided that I was going to buy a Monkey King bar this game. Technically, I don't don't need it because they don't have evasion. I feel like this Monkey King bar is a little bit of a poor choice. Uh, in a lot of cases, I feel like I really like Monkey King bar and Lone Druid personally. I think it's a really nice item, um, but I feel like this game it wasn't perfect. Either way, it is a big damage increase. It's one of the really nice things about it. It's just raw damage. You get 88 damage out of the item. So for now, I have a Demon Edge. But I thought I would have gone attack speed instead. Just increase my attack speed a bit more, but I, I think it's okay. As a damage item, I really like MKB. But I don't think this is the game for it, really. Like, the only hero they're likely to get some evasion on is maybe Bounty Hunter, maybe Ember Spirit. See how fast I did those jungle camps, though? Just go camp to camp, send him back. But MKB increases the bear damage a huge amount, and it does apply more mini bashes. I was hoping we could get the disable off. Oh, he was actually ready for me. It actually worked out. We got bounty as well there, that was pretty big. For your sins. So yeah, uh, Demon Edge does increase the damage by a lot. It'll make the bear hit for around 200. Keep in mind that a uh, Monkey King bar, it, again, it's normal damage, so against heroes it doesn't do that much, but I think the bash should do full damage. It shouldn't be reduced. Because it's like a separate instance similar to Mjolnir. So the, the Bash should actually do more damage than a regular item would. Maybe another reason you can argue for Maelstrom being good and Mjolnir as well. Same thing as uh, Radiance really though. The the straight right clicks are not necessarily where you want to go with Lone Druid. It doesn't, it isn't really his biggest strength.
I felt like the MKB would be pretty good against um pretty good against Timbersaw though. That is one thing that it provides you. Um, the reason for that is because if he throws out a, a Timber Chain and you stun him as he's traveling, he stops moving. So one buff against Timber Saw there. Or one nerf to Timber Saw that is. I should have been moving north instead of to my right. I could have gone from camp to camp slightly faster there. The camp's respawning in about 20 seconds, but I think I was sending it back to heal. Um, I think I can pick up one javelin. I could also make an argument for getting a, an, an abyssal blade. If anything, that's probably better than what I was doing here, in my opinion. Like, if I just want raw damage, then abyssal is clearly the better item, right? It gives you an extra 60 damage, whereas MKB gives you 88. I think that was one big mistake that I made this game. My itemization wasn't Radiant's perfect. If this game was... I mean, I, it's reliable damage as well, right? It, like, rather than relying on, like, mini stuns and things like that, I could just get a Abyssal Blade ability. I could actually just stun somebody for two seconds wherever my bear is. No matter what. That's something that I... I don't think I valued enough. I did lose mana on my bear, unfortunately. A lot of Invoker's abilities are very good against Lundry. This looked like a, it was definitely time to run here. Yeah, I knew my bear was gonna die. That was a pretty big mistake. I had to resummon. Yeah, that was actually a really big mistake. Really, really big mistake. I died, I resummoned my bear, I stayed longer than I needed to. I absolutely didn't need to die there. That was a pretty, pretty huge mistake. About 500 away from my MKB. And again, I just should have a simple, I should just simply have Abyssal Blade. There's no reason not to have Abyssal Blade if you're worried about disables. That's probably the build if you have poor lockdowns. Just go Mjolnir into Abyssal. Give, give yourself as much attack speed as possible while having some early game farming damage. And then transition into a Basher and finish it up with an Abyssal. And instantly you have the ability to Bash somebody and follow it up with a 2 second disable. Or you can abyssal somebody for two seconds and you get like three or four hits in and you have the chance to root them which would guarantee the second follow-up disable. There's no reason to, to to back up for MKB. I think that was by far the biggest item mistaken. The MKB damage is good but it's not everything. That was a huge ult from Nature's Prophet that pushed all the waves really nicely. I actually really like that Chachu and Necro 3. This helped a lot. Made up for his well, lack of damage basically. I think they should have gone on the invoker there, maybe. But there were more heroes there, so maybe it was a mistake. Well gotten Other items, if you guys are curious. Uh, Bounty Hunter is an eagle song for some reason. I guess he's making a... Uh, oh, it's probably an e-blade, Dagon. It's his goal. I also bought a pair of dust. I've been holding one of these whole game. There's a couple kill, a lot of kills we lost because I didn't have dust. No reason to uh, not hold one. I've got item slots, you know? I have to be a little careful until I get my bear up. I think we're preparing to go to the rusher because we knew they were there. Didn't realize till about here that my smoke was gone. Has fallen to the rate immortality. Luckily he got the bunny to start, which is pretty good. That guy just got wrecked. Huge, huge ice path from Chris. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Sprout attempt there was a good idea, but I, I don't think it worked out perfectly. Gonna have to use Rabbit here to re give movement speed to everybody. And overall fight was pretty good. We got an Aegis out of it. Two kills, I think. It was it was overall very good there. And that's gonna allow me to finish my MKB as well.
Definitely should have an AC or a uh, Abyssal though. Now the only times when going something like Mjolnir Abyssal is not good is when they have a super single target physical carry. So for example, if I'm up against a PA, and the PA has a lot of damage items and a lot of crit, he could actually just focus on killing the bear every time it's up, because it only has 6 armor, right? If he does that, it makes my life a lot harder, and then it forces me to go a different item build. If I'm against something that's heavily physical damage, unlike this game, like, Ember is basically not very single target damage, he's, he's kind of like AoE physical is how I describe him, with magic. So an Ember I don't have to worry about, but if there's a PA, I would instead go AC after Maelstrom, and then I would probably make a Basher. That way I still get a lot of attack speed, which I need. I'll still get the attack speed that I need, but I don't go all in for the Mjolnir, because you really need some armor if they do have single target. Luckily though, a lot of the heroes that are popular right now are, are pretty component magic. Like, they have a lot of magic base. If I'm against an SF, I would probably also have to get armor because of his minus armor aura. But a lot of other heroes, you can definitely get away with just going straight for uh, Basher Mjolnir kind of a thing. Again, increasing my attack speed. Uh, maybe should have gone for the medium camp instead, but it's like we found a bounty here. Went for the, went for the dust there. Don't have rabbit. There we go. Bear hits really hard now. Got another uh, hyperstone here. I feel like I I kind of like the Hyperstone pick, I just really should have Abyssal into another Hyperstone, I think. Cancelled my ulti as soon as I realized that I wasn't going to get him. Again, I'm just going to call Battlecry my ultimate. Since it does increase my damage by 150 and my armor by 20, it's really good. I don't think I would justify buying um, Solar Crest either, I, I don't think that's worth the value. Okay, I'll, I'll pressure this guy if I can. It's probably gonna back though. Too bad the ice path didn't land. I look dead. We got a little baited there. I think if uh, Jakiro would have landed his ice path, we could have killed him. Um, I don't know if he has Yules yet. He actually does. He should actually, every time that he sees the Ember, he should Yules and Ice Path. Every single time. Sending the Courier in here. I don't know who's Basilius it is. The Quap blinked for it though. Which I think is actually fine. So it allowed the uh, SF to fight the rest of the heroes on the back line. It basically allowed us to defend with only three heroes. The the courier act destruction actually helped a lot. I'm happy to trade a courier kill like that for um for Rax easily. They already have like more gold than they need due to tracks, so. Under attack. So, pretty good defense. Uh, Nature's Prophet, I told him to go Hex instead of Orchid at that point. Now he's making a Scotty. I was like, don't make Scotty. He made Scotty anyways, but whatever. The, the slow's actually not terrible, I guess. If we are having some... If they're kind of just kiting us, then having a slow is not terrible. But, bought another Dust, of course. Still not happy with my item choice, I still should have made Abyssal into an AC, I think would have been better than than making the MKB. MKB is nice, but 
It just really wasn't needed. They have no evasion. If they don't have evasion, it's not worth it. Not quite close enough. Got a gem out of this. Punished for your sins. So my bear's items, if you guys are curious. It's gonna be for another AC. Or I was thinking Moonshard was another way to deal with it. Like I was literally so focused on I need to bash and root as much as possible. I wasn't even thinking like maybe I should just Stop for a second and buy a freaking a uh, sacred relic. Just make an ace or make an abyssal. Like, I don't know why I didn't just do it. It's very frustrating watching it now. I was looking at this entirely the wrong way. I was looking. I was basically looking at a really roundabout way to actually solve the problem by just getting insane attack speed. That way I could bash in brutal and stuff. But in reality, I should just be focusing. I can guarantee this done. You know. Uh, Moonshard's kind of a cool idea, though. Again, it's it's really about attack speed on the hero, and attack speed is actually nice. I've got Mjolnir and I've got MKB. Any attack speed I get really increases my damage a lot. It's like we we're fighting down here. Uh, I don't know why I went all the way back to base. Maybe I should have TP'd the actual fight part. This is really dangerous. I was really late to this fight. I'm just not attacking for some reason. Oh, actually, I think I, I don't know if I chain bashed him or not, but. Don't think I can catch the timber either. I was really late to that fight, honestly. That was bad. To be worried about my HP since I'm so low. Got 2400 now. Could get another Hyperstone. I assume the bear can eat a Moonshard as well. But I'm not 100%. But I think AC is more important at this point. I, I was basically like, okay, I'm taking fights. I'm actually taking a lot of damage now. I need to increase my survivability on my bear. Most straightforward way is either Vlad's or AC. AC being the more likely of the two. I'm also level 25, I didn't really realize that, but now I did. I was like, wow, I'm actually really leveled here. Well, it's because I've gotten a lot of CS. 349 is a crap load. But I have been farm focusing it almost entirely on farming. And apparently they just don't put wards in our jungle. Because if they actually just ganked the jungle repeatedly and kept killing me, then I would be playing off of this game. I barely looked at the map. I'd like go to the jungle and I'd just farm. And then I'd farm the jungle again, and then I'd farm the jungle again. But we did know that the invoker was dead. Uh, who got that kill, by the way? Oh, the Shadow Fiend got a solo kill on him, I think, is what happened. So now we're into push mode, basically. Now, normally I'd run straight to the fight, but I think it's important like this to push lanes sometimes. Killing just a couple creeps can sometimes mean a tower. Getting a free bounty kill on the back was really big, too. Should have waited to save Battlecry until I knew the glyph wasn't there. That damage, baby! I think I told my team to get back at this point. Was able to get the plate mail. We lost Shakiro, but we got a Rax. We got a couple kills. It's pretty worth it. Um, you could maybe say that I should get Ags at this point, but I just don't. I'm not ready to buy Ags yet. I think there's. I think if you're really far ahead with a Radiance build, then buying Ags is better. Like if you go um, Radiance AC, that then Ags is is definitely an item you should pick up. But in a game like this, where I'm we're lacking disabled so bad, and my damage is good, but it's not everything. Then I think it's a little hard to justify eggs every time. Run, 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 run
I'm trying to make an AC. Grab the AC, put it on the bear. Now my bear is AC. I'll show you guys. Should have bought an observer or brought an observer word as well because now I don't have one on my hero. But very, very good items here. This is like really, really good single target items. Lots of attacks, 80 attack speed here, 35 attack speed here, or 55 actually. This gives you 15 attack speed. Another reason I like Monkey King Bar because it gives more attack speed to your bear. Um, and then I have Skull Basher. Next item is definitely Abyssal. Um, that or Vlad's are my two choices. But Abyssal is probably superior. And now I basically don't have to attack with my hero at all. My hero is kind of worthless. I mean, it's decent damage. If I battle cry, it's really good too, but... They are rushing, so I gotta get over there. Maybe shouldn't have used Rabbit there, because if I get Tornado, that's bad. Again, pushing out waves a little bit. I saw the hero, the bounty up there. We got the Invoker, that was a really big kill. If I got either an Entangle or Bash on her, she was probably dead and get either, unfortunately. Quap lived, and we should be able to take Roche from this. Unfortunately, Slight of Fist did so much. We do kill Quap for that. I just felt like taking Roche was more important, though. Searing Chains is very good against. Uh, and uh, he bought a rapier, by the way, so I was like, oh, what did I drop? Oh, it was an orb of venom. Put it on my hero. I have no idea why I bought back here. That was actually a big mistake. That feels like a rage buyback to me. Okay, so now my bear is even stronger. If I got a bash there, or if I had an abyssal blade, either would have. To be really careful, when you have a rapier on your bear, by the way, if your bear dies at all, it drops it. This guy came forward, which is weird. ran my bear away, that way if it died it would go... <laughs> Had to pick up the rapier again. So I killed the ember, that was his buyback. Pick up the rapier again, it's now on my hero. I can't drop it though is the problem, I can't give it back to the bear. So it's on my hero until I die. It's one of the downsides to uh, stealing a rapier when you're playing Lone Druid. It's not always exactly where you want it to be. But I got the bash off on the Ember and we, we won that fight. Un unfortunately, my bear is dead for 40 seconds, so until my bear revives, I actually have no damage. So that's kind of crappy. Um, I could also Dyer's pretty righteously justify getting maybe a, a blade mill sometimes on Lone Druid. I don't think I want to, but there might be times where it's good because my hero has so much HP. I have almost 3k HP. It means if somebody just does damage to me, Radiant I'm probably going to reflect it. Fortified. Namely on uh, Ember Spirit. But the problem is that it doesn't work against Sleight of Fist, it'll work afterwards. Radiant but considering Ember is usually a bit weaker on HP, it's not bad to do that. We're just basically running at the base. Um, I, I wanted to wait a little bit Radiant's to grab my Abyssal. For obvious reasons, so send that one back. It's something I should have really had a long time ago. Just the rabbit. I used my roar way too early. Radiance Middle Tower has fallen. Radiance Ancient. At this point I will just push. It looks like my hero hits as hard as my bear does on building snow, just due to our rapier. It's pretty amazing. The rapier was way too dangerous this game because either Shadowfiend or myself could use it. And I can easily hold it because I've got 
I got 12 item slots, you know? And this is kind of what happens when you lose a team fight against the Lundrid. He kind of just takes all of your buildings instantly. It's hard to deal with. I don't quite know why I'm running for the hills. Could have abyssaled there. My itemization made that game way harder than it had to be, honestly. If I just would have bought an abyssal after my Mjolnir, after my Basher, then I would have been sitting much better off than having an MKB. The MKB damage is good, but the abyssal would have been about the same. Well, not as much damage, but more lockdown. And then I could have transitioned that into AC and still had like equivalent attack speed. Probably would have been far better, but whatever. It, it did at least prevent the Ember Spirit from buying something like a Butterfly, because that's kind of nice, because if he just bought Butterfly randomly, and I not, then I tried to kill him, and I was missing him 35% of the time, that would have been a massive advantage for Ember Spirit. He could have hit a timing window, for example, where he just beats me in a couple fights because I can't hit him. And that would have been really difficult to deal with. But never happened, got MKB, probably shouldn't have, but I did. And uh, picked up a Rapier, thanks, thanks to Ember Spirit. I farmed everybody. But I did farm a little too much, I think. But my kill participation was good. My overall farm, 634. That was good. 379, or 397 last hits. It's a part of 34 kills. And maybe at some point I should have gotten eggs. Um, but I felt okay with the way that I played the hero in the mid to late game. Once I got a cloak, it was actually very difficult for them to kill my hero. The only way they could do it is by, like, Daedalus crits on Ember Spirit. So I think I played this okay. But you always have to slightly adjust your Lone Druid build to whatever you're playing against. I think Medallion is pretty much core every time, because Medallion is always good. Uh, but you, some games you buy a cloak. Uh, the game after this one, for example, I bought a Magic Wand because I was up against a Bristleback and a bunch of other physical carries. So I was like, I don't actually need Magic Resistance. Um, I actually just need uh, Wand Charges, because they cast so many spells, and I'll get heals that way. So that's another way to play. Wand instead of Cloak, for example. Um, some games you might even want to buy both, who knows. But one or the other is usually pretty darn good to have and pretty standard. Uh, the item build on Lone Druid, the bear itself changes a little bit, but I felt very good about my Maelstrom into Mjolnir build this game. Um, felt pretty good. The the Mjolnir active is is quite good for damage. So, all right, thanks for watching, guys. That's Lone Druid. Um, I'll get to the top heroes you guys voted for in the polls. Right now, Terrorblade's at the top. Terrorblade Enigma. Tusk, Shadow Fiend, Earth Spirit, Venge, and Slark. Uh, we recently added um, the ability to remove heroes that are in the pool, so whatever gets voted to the top will stay there, basically, until I play it. So we should have more variety. It's a little bit more clear to me which heroes I need to play now. It's very clear. Terrorblade and Enigma are up next. So thanks, everybody, for watching, and I will be bringing you guys another video tomorrow. See you later.